Westy. Fitting. Thanks. In a We're room. in the world of whiskey. In a room full of booze. I feel like we've gone from Polter's Bar to the world of whiskey. I don't know what they're trying to say about us, but um, maybe we're in heaven. But There's a common denominator. There's a trend. Big trend. <laughs> do you like whiskey? I do, yeah. I used to have my own with Lot Loman whiskeys. Blended it myself. Blended yourself. What a good place. What a good place to start. Now, let's start with the most important stuff. Cheltenham Festival. You were there well after after Hong Kong. Yeah. How did it go? You were surrounded by friends, royalty. Did you have a nice time? Did you back any winners? I had a great time. I backed a few winners. Unfortunately, most of those were in accumulators. Where kind of the fourth or fifth one of that accumulator fell or didn't win. The story. Typical Cheltenham, really. Got greedy. If I'd have just backed them all <laughs> individually, it would have been a lot happier experience. But it was still good. It was still great. Cheltenham's always great. And how are your horses? How are they doing? They're all good. They're uh, um, fit and ready to go at air in a couple of weeks' time. The famous Barney Curley-inspired accumulator that you've got lined up for air? Hopefully we might have... Uh, Two or three winners, yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> um, back to Hong Kong. Um, give me your, your take on the week itself. Um, I thought the golf course, considering the length of it, stood up really well to you know, some of the best players in the world. I think 13 underplayed often, didn't it? and the weather was pretty good. We didn't really have strong winds to contend with. Um, there wasn't really too much rain. It, it's the kind of golf course that proves that it doesn't have to be a long golf course to be tricky. Um, it's a, just a lovely old members golf course, isn't it, Fanling? And, uh, mm. and then when you take some of the best players in the world and stick them on it, it can still defend itself with tight fairways in places, um, great greens, runoffs. Um, subtle grain on the greens which makes it makes it tricky the rough wasn't ridiculous um it just is a great old design and and a tricky test and the location hong kong first time we went there or have been there sorry should i say with live it's obviously been a golf course and an event that's been on the circuit and you know pretty well known for a lot of people over the last 10 15 20 years would you like to go back there? Is it somewhere that you see as a staple potentially in the live circuit going forward? Yeah, I'd love to go back there. I think it's a really good market for live. Um, Hong Kong is one of the biggest cities in Asia. Um, they don't have a lot of golf courses, but there are a lot of golfers in the city. Um, it's kind of one of the financial epicenters of, of Asia, so it makes a lot of sense to keep going back there. I think it's a, a great place for a tournament. The, the crowds turn out. Um, they love the sport. Obviously, they have the horse race in there, which we went to. Great, great crowds there. Uh, they have the Hong Kong Sevens um, and, and the golf, obviously. Um, and they're always well represented. And as far as our golf goes as a team, it was a really good week. Mm. Um, I wasn't able to be there, um, but I was watching. Good excuse, though. It was a good excuse, yeah. We did have our third baby, which was very exciting. Um, and I did actually manage to watch the last round from the hospital with the new technology, every shot at any moment. So Great I was watching... Where your priorities lie. Well, you know, I was tucked up, <laughs> side of the bed, in one of those chairs that has got to be the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And I was watching all the guys at any moment. I was in all the shots. And it was really exciting. I mean, look, to come down the stretch, and even with, you know, three or four holes to go, we were in second place, one shot off the lead. Um... And really got the buzz. And yeah. um, is that, do you think, due to the golf course just really suiting us? Or do you think we're trending, I think, as a team in the right direction? Felt like we turned a corner. There's no doubt that the golf course suited us. Uh, most of us have played there before, once or twice. Even though we got off to a fairly average start again from the first round, we, we can't get off to the fast start, can we? We can't <laughs> seem to come out of the box, blocks quickly, which is essential when it's only a three round tournament. Yeah. Um, we managed to, I think, I think having four counting rounds, the final round is really good for us. We're all pretty consistent. We don't have that one blowout round. So uh, um, that definitely plays into our favour. Um, just a couple of putts on the last couple of holes, like you said, I missed one from about three feet on my final hole. Henrik 
bogeyed his final hole. Um, you know, was, that was the difference between second and fourth, which could have turned a good week into a great week. And thoughts for us as a team this week? Do you think this is a golf course that suits us? I mean, we, we know that you know, there are specific golf courses on the rotor that we think will be slightly more suited to. Do you, do you hear, Mark, this is one that you think we've got a good chance in this week? I think this golf course is a golf course that really should suit us. Um, I think, even though you don't, people don't think it, I think that there's a premium on hitting fairways, a bit like Fan Ling. Um, we've all played it a lot before. I was amazed today to hear that John Ram had never played it before. Wow. Yeah, you would have thought that, you know, he would have played it, but it's just fallen in a gap where he didn't play when it was on the PJ yeah. Tour and he didn't play last year yeah. or the year before. So um, we've all had the chance to see it many times with the wind in many directions, which is interesting this week because the practice rounds, it's going to blow from one direction and be strong and then it's going to lay down a little and come from the other direction. So even if you have had a practice round, it's going to play very difficult, different to when the uh, tournament rounds come around. So. It is definitely an advantage to have been out there in competitive play, I think. Just talking about the course, the Blue Monster, it's, and when it was played back here from 2007, I think it was to 2016, there was like a 10 year stretch with the WGC. Do you think that it was quite a big, difficult golf course just given the time and the equipment that was there and, and how long and tough it played um, in comparison to? What you see now, I was quite surprised, if I'm honest, with the stats that I always thought that coming here, this was going to be a big, tough, difficult golf course that might not suit us. But the stats indicate something completely different, that there's a much more of a premium on accuracy um, and tee to green and hitting fairways and hitting greens is really important. Well, I didn't used to like it. I didn't think it was a very good course before the changes and they redesigned it. I think um, President Trump bought... Uh, Gil Hansen and needed a, a redo of it um, and it changed it completely um, before the changes it was definitely a bomb, bomber's paradise you know you could get really close to a few holes it, I think I once described it as a field on a flight path it's not the most uh, um, <laughs> You did pretty well here. Like I had a look at, I had a look at your results. I mean, you only finished, you finished outside the thirtieth, outside of thirtieth twice in the ten years that you played here. Yeah, it was only like thirty-two players. Playing. No, come on, don't don't let the truth get away from a good story. Um, and, and like I said, you could you could really just blast driver everywhere. The first was short, the second was short. You could drive it up near that. Um, Eleven was very different. So I th they they've lengthened it and they put a lot of good bunkering in, um, they've changed um, eight significantly, uh, that used to go over to the right, now goes over to the left, uh, nine feels like it's changed a little bit and it's, it's a real good challenge now and it tests as every as aspect of your game. Also it was, it feels like it plays differently with the grasses, it, it feels somehow like it was a different grass when we played before, um, the greens um, were really grainy, whereas now they're not. They're a little bit more subtle, and and they can get them a lot quicker. It feels like so. Um, it's like comparing apples and oranges, really. So, uh, but I, I, this is this is now one place I look forward to coming to. I think it's a really good test of golf. I think it, you've got it fairways. You've got it good iron shots. There's always a bit of breeze here, so you've got to have control of your ball flight. Around the greens is a lot harder. You know the greens were shallow before. Now there's deeper bunkers, there's more definition to them. Um, you can't really play as aggressively because you don't want to short side yourself. And on the greens, um, you know, they're tricky, they get really quick. And obviously when it's windy, as it was today, not that it's going to be as windy as yeah. it was today, but um, you know, the ball can, you, you know, you get slightly out and the wind really takes the ball away from the hole. And how do you approach this golf course, you know, playing a stroke play event as opposed to playing match play, which is where we've played for the last couple of years? Um, well, do you approach it any differently? I don't think you do approach it any differently. Um, I, we played, I played singles the first time it was here, uh, and then myself and Ian played foursomes last time. And really, foursomes, you just, when you're playing it in the Ryder Cup, you tell your partner, look, fairways and greens, fairways and greens, just try and grind the opponents down. Because in foursomes, you know, if you shoot level par, chances are you're going to win, especially yeah. on a difficult golf course. So, and that's really the best tactic for, play, for playing this golf course, fairways and greens. Once you start straying off the fairways on this golf course, with this kind of rough, it's real flying rough. Um, 
distance control, you know, holding the greens can become a real problem. Given that this is probably, and well, correct me if I'm wrong, but arguably probably one of the harder golf courses that we'll play this year, how do you think that will play into the dynamic of this week, given four scores counting on the last day on a difficult golf course? Mm. Do you think it will be incredibly volatile? Well, hopefully. I think that's what everybody wants to see. I think, you know, there's, there's got to be more made of the team aspect of live. I would like to see four scores to count every round, but um, I think, I don't know whether that's going to come in, but certainly four scores in the final round makes for a volatile format and final day. should be uh, quite exciting. Now, as far as I guess at the beginning of the season, we've spent a lot of time talking about uh, stats, the data, leaning into it a little bit heavily, um, or more heavily, should I say. Um, how have you found that? Obviously, there's been, you know, we've presented you guys with not just data on, you know, your own games to kind of look at, but also, you know, preparation notes for golf, for specific golf courses. Have you enjoyed that? Is that something you've done previously, you know, before we've, we've kind of introduced it on a bit more of a regular cadence? Well, I've never really used them that much before. I know the other lads have, but I've really not fallen back on statistics very much. So um, I use them quite sparingly. Um, I do I do look through them, but you know I have my own ideas about where my game's at and what I can work on. You know I've been doing it for thirty years now, and I know where my game should be, and I know where it's at at the moment, and I know what I need to work on. So I don't really need stats to to tell me that. But um, yeah, I think. It, it's become more of a statistic driven game um, I see a lot of the younger lads using them more often now my son uses Sam uses them um, you know logs down most of his rounds and tries to figure out where he needs to work on but uh, I'm a bit old school and uh, um, served me well so far but uh, yeah I mean sometimes they do highlight an, an error or a mistake that you wouldn't normally recognize so uh, yeah it's good to have uh, all boxes ticks, I suppose. Speaking of the old school, you know, you, you walk down the range, you know, on any given day, and it's track man, it's foresight. You're, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're not someone that typically leans on kind of that specifically when you're at events. Mm. Is that just, again, something that you've always historically done? You like to kind of, um, you know, you're good at what honestly you know, and, you know, you don't need to necessarily lean on that during tournament week. Do you, do you use it in off weeks? Do you kind of lean on that information at all? Or Very occasionally. Um, I did have a TrackMan for a while. I don't use that now. Um, I've got a GC quad, and that's normally being used by my son. Um, <laughs> I'll text him. Um, I could do with using the GC quad this afternoon. He's like, oh, sorry, I've got it in Dubai. <laughs> well, that's really handy, isn't it? <laughs> um, but... Uh, I'll use it every now and again. I use it more with the driver when I'm fitting a driver. Uh, I don't use it too much on the irons. I tend to look at the ball flight more when I'm testing irons or wedges or, you know, I can, I can I use feel. And I guess any different clubs in the bag this week than what you've been using previous weeks given the golf course? I know you interchange sometimes long irons and, and, and rescue clubs is that going to be have you looked at that this week well it's it's forecast to be a little bit windy this week so i'll probably not take a hybrid out and go for a three iron i think there's a couple of shots out there that could ask for a three iron you know it's easy to bring the flight down with the with that rather than the, the hybrid um having said that if you start missing fairways then the hybrid is quite useful to gouge it out through so, that rough. Uh, it you know it's 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 kind of a game time decision but I'll, i think i'll pretty much go for three wood then three iron rather than putting a hybrid in there and dropping the three iron it's quite a strong three iron as well it's probably a, somewhere between two and three so I can hit it off the tees and get sort of 250 260 out of it if need be now obviously this week's an important week but next week kind of marks I would say for the average golfer probably the start of the start of the golfing calendar right I mean I live in the northeast you're in the UK um the Masters, I've always felt like, is well, kind of the beginning of the, the golf season. When I, when I was growing up, and I suppose you to a certain extent, back in England, the first tournament we saw on TV that year was there was the Masters on BBC, wasn't it? And we only got the back nine of that, and it felt like the start of the golfing year, seeing the, the flowers all out in bloom and the greenness of Augusta and that back nine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it does, it, it, it does normally feel like the start of the golfing year for for the general public, I would imagine. And you played in that event, I mean, you can tell me, but I would imagine it's, I, what, north of, north of 10 at least? 
I think it's north of 20. There you go. I played play my first one in 97 uh, and played a couple of years ago. So uh, and I missed a few in the middle there. One when Sam was born and uh, I didn't qualify for a couple there when I went through a bit of a slump. But uh, yeah, I've, uh, I've played it a lot and done all right around there. A couple of seconds. Yeah. had a chance. Special memories, like as well as part outside of you know potential yeah. results. Have you got some stories? I, I mean, I, good, I, good I, tales. Loads um, playing with Jack Nicholas in the final round and the first one in '97. Um, actually, the night before, I found out that I got drawn with Jack, so I went out and bought the picture of him. You know, when he held the put on 17 in '86, was it? Following the with the putter in the air, got him to sign it after we played on the Sunday, and that hangs up at home on Amazing. the wall. Um, 99 had the lead for the first time going down 10 playing with Tiger uh, promptly went bogey double bogey and blew my chance there um, had a chance in 10 playing with Phil yep. when he yep. had that incredible shot out of the tree, trees on 13 um, had a chance playing with Danny in 2016 yep. we were yep. um, I know I, I chipped him from the back of 15 for Eagle and uh and just as Jordan Spieth was making a mess of 12 and went from four behind to maybe one in front or, or tied for the lead with Danny. Um, so there's been lots of great memories of Augusta. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a special place and you know, even, it's, one of, it's one of the few places that if I was given an invite to go back, even outside of when the Masters on, I probably would take it. Interesting. And what do you think it takes to win round there? What are the, what are the key... Key parts to your game that you need to be sharp for that particular week. You get a lot of repetitive, repetitive winners around there, and uh, I think getting into contention regularly and knowing the golf course well because it changes so much between the practice rounds and the tournament rounds. It's important to to know it under competitive conditions, and just a couple of yards here and there can make a huge difference between being able to get up and down, being in a good spot, and fancying a chip that you could maybe make or just it being impossible and knowing you're going to have to hold from 30 feet to get down into you know not not having a chance of getting close so um, I like players that have played well around there in the past I think it's definitely a horses for courses place um, obviously you need to put well yep. um, one of the the main um, the, the thing that guards is the greens um, you know, like I said, missing in the right places. Um, tee to green, it's become less of a right to left players course over the years as they've lengthened it. 11, um, tens, probably 10, 13 are the only two really now where you put, yeah. need to put any kind of shape on it. It used to be a lot. It used to be down the second, yeah. um, even up the fifth, but that's gone miles back. Um, nine used to be a sling, but not really anymore. Uh, 14, not really anymore, but it used yeah. to be. Um, There's a lot made of that, isn't there? That, that, that you need to hit a right to left ball to be able to contend to, yeah, at the Masters. Not, not anymore. Yeah. And um, I think that's brought more players into it, probably. Do you think this week is good preparation for the Masters? Did you, did you personally play the week before a major? Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. I think it's personal preference, really. Uh, how you're feeling at the time, where your game's at. Um, I would say that I mean, I'd, if, I, if I was playing in the Masters, having played Hong Kong, then I had been two weeks off, I would want to play competitively this week going into uh, a major championship because I think three weeks off would be two. You might turn up and be not quite as sharp as, as you want to be. So, uh, um, And I think the green speeds are going to be pretty similar. Um, I don't think there's too, too much wind in the forecast for the lads where they're going to get, you know blown off their feet sometimes with the Open Championship if you play Lynx Golf the week before and it gets really windy and terrible conditions it kind of knocks your rhythm and you swing out yep. whereas I don't think that'll happen this week for the lads that are playing uh, playing the Masters and I guess given the current landscape that we're in at the moment how important do you think it is that the live, the live golfers perform well at the Masters next week? I honestly don't think it's that important, but I think it's great for the public that all the best players in the world, or as close to, are coming together for for next week and for all the major championships. I think uh, um, the 
majors have a great opportunity of setting themselves even further or higher on a pedestal, don't they, than the other tournaments because they're the, the only four tournaments that can claim to have all the best players in the world at, you know, right now. So uh, um, it, I think it's exciting for everybody that, uh, you know, the majors come around and, uh, you know, they've, they've got uh, arguably, the, you know, there might be a couple of players missing that you think might be ought to be there, but, uh, you know, the Masters and the Open, the US Open and, and the PGA, you know, set themselves apart in that regard at the moment. You're going to play a few senior majors this year? Yeah, I'm planning First. down to play uh, um, the US Senior PGA up in the Chicago area and um, the US Seniors Open. So I'm very excited about mixing it up with the old guys, being a youngster. <laughs> a young whippersnapper. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Seeing all my old mates, really. You know, you, like yeah. you're saying, that, uh, you know, I wander down a range and there's all these kids on it and they're all using Trackman and stuff like that. Be nice to walk down the range and uh, recognise a few faces at a couple of senior senior major championships. And changing tack slightly, I know at the beginning of the week. Well, you, you've obviously, uh, as you just said, you spent some spent some time for a few days with with old friends as well in Orlando from different tours, and then we went to, to Arbor School to launch um, the Little Sticks Initiative um, there. Um, how much fun was that for you? Um, spent some time with some good kids. Um, and given that we're, I guess, launching the program, obviously, you know, outside of the UK. Yeah, it was nice to see that. I mean, we've we've um, done videos and stuff like that, and set up promotional games, haven't we, on ranges to show how the game should be played. And we've had schools and kids at golf tournaments and things like that. But it was nice to see it practically implemented, actually, at a school. See the yeah. kids come out of class as if they were going to a PE class and running our program. Nice to see how the teachers were using it and responding to it and, you know, how they were um, educating the kids on how to do it. You know, they won't have played golf before in school. No. And, uh, um, you know, it's it's something different for, for them. And, uh, you know, especially in that school, you know, it, with, the, with it not being a moving ball, with it being a stationary ball and you can kind of get them in the right position and show them how to do it, it they, they were responding really well to it and they seem to be having a great time. So, uh, you know, if we can uh, if we can improve and educate and, and help uh, even the smallest bit, it, it, it's great for them and great yeah. for us to, to give back. What's really cool actually was having dinner with Jordan last night and he was saying that it's not only is he coming up to a year now, having done a year, but I remember that when we were in Liv, Orlando last year, Arbor School were obviously the first school that we actually did anything with, with, with you guys, and how far the programme has come on in the course of a calendar year is, is astonishing, really. It's probably one of my proudest things, I think, with this franchise, is how far it's come. We've got a letter of in, almost... We've got an intent for 250 plus schools in the UK to yeah. take on the program. We both don't enjoy talking about growing the game. I think it's such yeah. a it's it's used so flippantly. And to be honest, you guys have been doing that all around the world for such a long time. Um, but to have the opportunity, I think, to be able to do something a little bit different um, and hopefully get um, golf into, or certainly the parts of golf into into schools yeah. and get people learning is is a, is a great opportunity. Yeah, it's incredible, and uh, you know, like I said, to see the smiles on the faces. And let's face it, we've been who doesn't love hitting golf balls or tennis balls at Ian Poulter in a Velcro suit oh. when it's ninety degrees <laughs> outside in Orlando? I mean, if you don't love that, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's probably the perfect ending for this. Actually, <laughs> um, best of luck this week, mate. Thanks. Even more luck at Air as well, because probably oh, yeah. won't get a chance to speak to you before then. Yes. Um, fingers crossed, we're celebrating a oh, few mate. winners. Yeah, that would be nice. Get a get a travel up. There we go. Thank you.